retro emulators are officially available on the App Store. You can play retro games on your iPhone. I cannot wait to tell you about them and how you can play them yourself. Emulators have been a sticky spot for Apple. They're something users have clamored for, but the iPhone maker has historically steadfastly banned them from its flagship marketplace. So what changed? And why now? And how can you use them? I'm sure most of you are aware of the Digital Markets Act in the EU, which is forcing major platform changes for Apple devices. If not, don't worry, I have a whole video on it linked here. At the same time, US regulators have also taken action against the tech giant, recently filing a wide-ranging lawsuit in March for monopolistic practices. In response to this, Apple has slowly started to drain the moat surrounding its App Store. We recently saw a change in Apple's policy surrounding game streaming applications, alongside the EU-focused alternative browser option and third-party app marketplaces. Likely due to these mounting regulatory pressures, the gates have opened for emulators on the App Store in early April, and we've started to see our first apps be released. However, there have been some issues with these initial apps, leading to them being quickly pulled from the App Store. So what's going on, and are you going to be able to download emulators from the App Store? The short answer is yes, but honestly, it's still a legal gray area. The first emulator to hit digital shelves was called IGBA, and it almost instantly climbed to the top of the App Store's charts. This app wasn't the original work of a developer though, and violated his licensing terms. It was also riddled with ads and seemed to ask for more permissions than an emulator should want like location tracking. Because of this, Apple removed IGBA from the App Store and apologized, saying they had approved the app in error. Very shortly after that, another app was released. This app was an NES emulator, but after no more than a few hours, it too was pulled. This time the app wasn't pulled by Apple, but it was voluntarily pulled by the developer. He pulled the app in fear of retaliation from Nintendo, a company who is famously litigious and has been on a bit of a uh, sue emulators out of existence binge lately. That has many wondering, what emulators are allowed on the App Store, which games can you play, and which ones are safe to use? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I hate to like rudely interrupt myself in the middle of a video because I have more cool things to talk about, but before we get to them, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Ivanki that recently launched its Fusion Dock Max 1. It's designed exclusively for Apple Silicon Mac users and is the only dock on the market with a dual Thunderbolt connection. It is outfitted with 20 different ports, including plenty of USB-C, legacy USB-A, a fast 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, audio jacks, and HDMI. Here's one of my favorite things about it though, is I love how all of the USB ports are standardized in full speed. Sometimes you get ones that are like 10 gigabit or five gigabit and you have to pick and choose like which ones you're connecting your peripherals to based on what you're doing. No, not with this hub. It's a similar story with the monitor situation. Personally, I use USB-C and HDMI for my monitors. Rarely ever DisplayPort. Yet, most other docs that I have reviewed include a DisplayPort connection on the back. Ivanki chose what makes sense for its actual users. Most Apple users are out there using USB-C and HDMI. I love that those are the options here. Plus, on the top of the line Mac, you can actually run four monitors at once with this thing. That's absolutely incredible and unheard of in this market. The whole dock is powered by two Thunderbolt chips on the inside, so you know this thing is not going to lag and the dock floats in the air, which promotes good airflow to keep it cool while it's sitting on your desk. If you're like me and you wanna upgrade your workflow, check out the Ivanki Fusion Dock Max 1. It's linked down below in the description as well as pinned in the comments. Now, let's go get back to the rest of the video. While at first opaque, Apple got a bit more clear in a follow-up statement, saying that it was okay to download ROMs and play them in emulators. For those of you that don't know, a ROM is just shorthand for a game in this scenario. And all of this is great news. The technicality here though, is that this only applies to retro consoles, and Apple doesn't specify what those are, definitely leaving itself some wiggle room. There's also an important distinction here between the emulators themselves and the content they're designed to work with. 
at least here in the US, emulators aren't doing anything illegal most of the time. However, if you just go to the internet and download a bunch of games to play on those emulators, then you probably are. There are a lot of conditions attached. These laws are also different for different geographic regions. So if you're not sure, I would consult your local laws. I am not a lawyer. This is one of the reasons Apple chose to avoid this space entirely in the past. To make it even more complicated, just because Apple is allowing emulators that can play ROMs on the App Store doesn't mean the companies that own that IP will agree. It'll be interesting to see if any of these companies decide to go after Apple because they've got really deep pockets. So far, there are two major emulators sitting on the App Store, and others are likely to launch too. First is a Commodore 64 emulator called MU64XL. Second, and this is the one people are hyped on, is Delta. I've been using Delta for ages, first as a test flight app, then from Riley's Alt Store, and now from the App Store. It's incredibly cool and works amazingly well. It runs games from Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, NES, SNES, N64, and Nintendo DS, basically what would be considered unsupported retro Nintendo systems. Here's how easy it is to use Delta. When you open it for the first time, there's not going to be any games here, so we're going to need to add some. To do that, we're going to need some ROMs. I started by heading to Safari, and I went to the Homebrew Hub, which is a bunch of free-to-play games that work with classic consoles. This Sips game looks really fun, so let's check this out. I'm going to tap on the game itself, scroll down, and I'm just going to hit Download. It's going to ask me if I want to download this, and then it'll save it to the Files app. I'm going to go back to Delta and I'm going to tap that plus button in the top corner. I could import from iTunes if they're on my computer, but in this case we'll do files. It's right here at the top of my list, SIPs. Let's go ahead and just tap on that and then tap open in the top right corner. Now I'm looking at my games, you can see we have a few here under Game Boy Color. Swooping over, we have Game Boy Advance and there's SIPs that I just added. I can tap and resume. As I said, so many different consoles are represented. It works both vertically like this and it even works in landscape orientation with different layouts based on the different consoles. A couple other things from Delta to point out, you can set up controllers including wireless controllers for up to four different players and you can set custom skins for each of the different consoles. This is just too cool. I put a link for it in the description if you want to download it yourself. Some have expressed optimism that in light of Apple's changes, Nintendo itself could launch an emulator on the App Store. Personally, I don't have much hope in this, but hey, you never know. Do you guys have any favorite systems that you're hoping to see emulators for? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, be sure you are subscribed to the channel with those notifications turned on so you don't miss my next video.